This time I got a Technics SA5470 vintage receiver. This one's got no sound. Let's see what's going on with this one. We've got a nice old Technics AM FM stereo receiver in for service. This one's an SA5470. And for those of you thinking I'm trying to pull a fast one saying, hey, we've seen this before, that's your receiver. No, it's not. Mine's a 5570. There's mine. Mine works. It's a 5470 I'm working on this time. Namely, that one right there. So what's wrong with this, you might ask? It has no sound. It can tune. You can see the tuning dial work, but there's no volume. All the lights are on, nobody home. Connect the record out into my test amplifier and we can confirm that the the tuner works so we know it's an amplifier problem because no sound from the amplifier so let's get the top off this one and see what's wrong with it somebody out there is going to call me an idiot because I don't know the power this one's got I'm going to guess 75 maybe 65 watts per channel mine has 85 per channel and mine's the next one up so I would imagine this one here is probably 65 or 75 watts per channel top do we see a problem right away besides the fact that one of the fuse bulbs is blown that's the least of my concerns what do we see wrong with this unit before we even put a meter to it and do any testing. Hmm? Hmm? Do we see the problem? Hmm, I'll let you guys think about that for a minute. What looks different? If you thought of this as a dual mono amplifier, which is not, but if you drew a line down the middle with the power relay or with the speaker relay being the dividing point between the left channel and the right channel, what do you see that is different between the two? Hmm. Hmm, what do you think? Anyone? Bueller? 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 It's missing parts. So somebody has been into this unit and they've removed 2.47 ohm resistors. Generally it's because the outputs are probably toast and someone removed them so that it either didn't have DC to the speakers or it wasn't making a big racket or just wasn't working at all. More than likely just wasn't working at all. But we have parts missing off of this one. And when I see units that there are parts missing, I get kind of nervous as to whether something like this is even going to be repairable. Because you don't know what somebody may have done to it. I get nervous whenever I get into anything that anybody else has been into. Let's just do a few measurements here. We'll see whether there's any high voltages on these stubs that are still sticking up here. 47 volts. Minus 47 volts. Minus 47 volts. Minus 47 volts. But on the, one of these ones here, there's minus 47 volts and there's plus 47 on the other side well these here should be sitting at zero you see these are emitter follower resistors so the fact that we've got high voltage on there is telling me that there's an output problem on this one and if there's an output problem on this one there's very likely drivers that are also shot on this receiver so might as well turn it off there's no point in doing any more tests as it sits we'll check the outputs on it and then I'll have to give the guy the bad news and let him know that it may not be worth fixing it all depends on how much he wants to spend it's a fellow that just picks up stuff and resells it so a unit like this these days might go for 100 150 bucks max I know someone's gonna come up and pull off some eBay you know Make a quote from eBay. eBay prices are not realistic and items do not sell for what eBay prices suggest. You can't even use them as a guideline because nothing sells for what eBay prices are listed. I got my 
5570 for free. Not only did I get my 5570 for free, I got two SB7000 speakers in perfect condition with them for free and uh, a couple CD players and a whole bunch of stuff. Just take it away, I don't want it. So that's basically what these things are. They're, they don't have much, if any, value. They're worth what someone is willing to pay for it. And something like this, people these days just aren't willing to pay a lot of money for vintage stuff. I still see people asking a lot for stuff, like on Facebook and stuff. There's people that are asking a lot of money for products, but they're listed week after week after week after week, and they're not going anywhere which is a pretty good indicator that uh, people just are not spending a lot of money on vintage audio equipment these days. Okay, looking in the bottom, everything has now been discharged. There's no charge on any of the capacitors. Let's uh, check and check out some of the driver transistors that will be in this circuit. Right down here, these are the drivers. Let's just see if the drivers are, are toast. Yeah, that driver shot. And the other driver is, uh, where is it? It's oh, this one here. That driver is shot. And the output transistor is over here, also gonna be, they're also gonna be bad. Even without disconnecting them from the circuit, I can measure. Uh, where are we here? Ah, we're shorted. So we got two drivers and two output transistors for sure that are shot. Here we go, we'll check this one. Collector to base and emitter. Short. Short. So, yeah, we, um, we need two output transistors. Minimum, minimum, two output transistors, both drivers are bad and those resistors are bad. I didn't check this transistor down here, we'll check that one as well. See if it's also roasted. Uh, the dual transistor seems to measure okay, how about this other one here? This one does not, is not measuring shorted. Oops, 0.6, yeah, let's see here. That might be other leakage. That one seems to check okay. I'd have to pull it out of the circuit. But um, at this stage of the game, the two drivers are shot. These two resistors are bad. And the output transistors are also cooked. So I'm going to set this one aside. Let the guy know that owns it that uh, it's got at least four transistors and two resistors that have to be replaced. And um, we'll look up and see what see if these parts are even available and what they cost and let him know I'm, I'm sure at this point he's probably going to say forget it because they um, cat's making noise cat's wanting my attention cat hears me talking out here and wants me to play he's going to have his toy sitting there at the door wanting me to play fetch with him because i have a cat that um, thinks he's a dog And I won't go down that road because they say it's a few people that I know that think that they're something other than what they are too. So we won't we won't touch that subject. Uh, anyway, um, I'm going to shut this one down now at this point because there's no point in going any further on this until I have an authorization. It's going to take a note of the transistor numbers on this just so that I can get prices on them and uh, we'll go from there. So I've got it labeled. It needs a 2SB541A, 2SD388A. 2SB536, 2S, or 2SB536, 2SD381, and two 0.47 ohm 5 watt resistors is what I can see so far. And of course the, the, the fuse bulb. 
<laughs> the, the fuse bulb, they call it, uh, fuse bulb for the display, for the middle one anyway. Got to get a hold of the guy that owns it. Again, I don't know at this point whether we're going to be doing any more on this. If he chooses to fix it, we'll be doing another video. Otherwise, uh, I will say thanks for watching. Bye.